A very good morning to you, Living Waters Church. A very good morning to you, to everyone that is watching. It's such a joy and a privilege to be in your home this morning. We just want to tell you that we love you. And uh, even though we are on the 51st day of lockdown, we know that our hearts are free, our souls are free. And therefore, we're going to just spend some time together glorifying and praising Jesus. Lessons from Zarephath. Shall we pray? We thank you, Lord, for this wonderful opportunity we have of coming before you. We pray your blessings upon every single one that has tuned in. We pray your blessings in every home, every family. I pray for the peace of God right now. I pray for the joy of heaven to saturate every home. I pray, Lord, that even as we open up our hearts to your word, that you would minister to us beautifully and wonderfully and powerfully. Lord, we just commit our service to you now in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, God bless you. Auntie Catherine is going to be speaking to our children first before we start uh, the adult service, if I may say so. See you in a while. Good morning, boys and girls. I hope that you're well. This morning, I have a fine activity for you. We're going to make a slingshot. And what does a slingshot remind you of? Yes. David and Goliath. David was a little boy and Goliath was a big giant like man. And David slayed Goliath using just a slingshot. Can you believe that? So what are we going to do today? We're going to make a slingshot. You would need ice cream sticks, some pebbles, string, a marker, some glue, a scissors, and you can use cardboard or um, an A4 paper, whatever you have. If you don't have ice cream sticks, you're welcome to use normal sticks. So, what we're going to do first, we're going to write down our memory verse. And our memory verse is, for the battle is the Lord's. 1 Samuel 17, 47. You can ask your mom and dad to help you if you do not know how to write. We're going to take the ice cream sticks and we're going to make it in a shape of a Y, just like this. And then you're going to attach a string on. And the next step is to place down your stones or your pebbles, or you can even use wool if you don't have any of these. Just like that. You can decorate your page however you would like. Now, why do why did we make this? I want you to know that when you're facing challenges and when you go through problems and you're feeling sad, I want you to be brave and courageous. Whenever you look at this piece of paper, you're going to realize that if you call upon the Lord and you call upon his name and say, please, Father, can you help me? Jesus, help me to be brave. Help me to be courageous and he would help you. In everything that you do, God will help you. All you have to do is just say a prayer. Now, this is what the finished product would look like. Can you see that? So you can decorate it however you'd like and you can hang it up in your room or you can put it where you do your schoolwork or you can keep it in the cupboard just so it reminds you that Jesus is always with you and all you have to do is call upon his name. I hope you enjoyed that. See you next week. A very good morning to you, my beloved people of Living Waters, family, friends, Facebook friends. God bless you today. Even though Pastor said we are on day 51, we thank God that he's brought us through so much. Amen. That even yes. this time of the COVID, the challenges that we are facing, he's going to see us through. Mm. And uh, well, I I'm banned from uh, any uh, uh, jokes, jokes mm. because apparently last week nobody laughed at my joke. So it's okay, I'll keep the jokes to myself. But uh, God bless you. <laughs> I miss Thanks for laughing at that at least. God bless you. I miss you all so very, very much. But just continue trusting God. He's seen us through so much and he will see us through it all over again. He has you under the palm of his hands. 
and wings. So I'm going to read from chapter 7 of first books, uh, first Kings chapter 17. And thereafter, Pastor is going to minister. And Elijah the Tishabite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilgal, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get you hence, and turn you eastward, and hide yourself by the brook of Cherith, that is, before Jordan. Now, a Cherith means separation. So uh, at that time, a uh, pastor was telling me that uh, uh, the place was so full of evil mm. and idol worship. But the Lord separated him. So what does it say to us? We can be in the world, but we must not be of the world. world. Mm. And, uh, and it shall come to you that he shall drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you. Now, if you know anything about ravens, they're scavengers. Mm. You will never get food from a raven. You know, it's like you, sometimes you get the children, they are so mean. No, no, I will not give you. Mm. But here the Lord is saying, when he blesses you, even the ravens will start blessing you. So don't be discouraged this morning. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook of Cherith, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread, there you go, and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. Now earlier I said that the brook was dry. Mm. Now I don't want you to worry, it's all here in the word of the Lord. When your brook is dry, it won't be dry for long. Yes. Because the mm. Lord will take care of you. Mm. He will take you out of the pit and he will take you right up to where others will be amazed at what is happening. So, Amen. if yes. your brook is dry, I, I don't know in what way, maybe your finances, maybe your food, just continue trusting him. Just continue trusting our God. And I tell you something, at the right time he will meet your need at the brink of your miracle he'll be there and the word of the lord came unto him saying arise you go to zarephath now another name for zarephath was sidion or you'll see the new testament which belongs to zidion and there to and dwell thee behold i have commanded a widow woman there to sustain you so he arose and went to zarephath and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called her, and he said to her, Fetch, I pray you, a little water from a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called her and said, Bring me, I pray you, a morsel of bread in your hand. Now asking for water, he has a widow who has so little uh, for herself, the bread, uh, and then he asked her for bread, and let's see what happens. And she said, as the Lord God lives. Now, uh, she wasn't a believing woman, isn't it? No. She, as you said, she was from a place called Sidon, which is a city, a Phoenician city, um, that had Baal worship. So therefore, later we would see that she is not a believer. Not and the whole that. idea here yeah. is that God commands a widow woman who is not a believer to bless his prophet, to bless Elijah. Yeah. Even the prophets are running at this time. Mm -hmm. It's COVID-19 in the Bible. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even the prophets are running. But God has raised a woman that does not belong in the Hebrew tribe. And yet... She is the one that God chooses to bless, him. To bless Elijah. But what surprises me here, yeah. and she said, as the Lord your God loves. And that's Which most important, means, sorry to disturb you. As the Lord, your, your God, God, not her God, she, didn't acknowledge she her doesn't God. say our God, she says as your God. So that's an important thing for us to remember. She says, as the Lord, your, your God. God okay. But... Mm. And for me, how did she recognize he was a prophet and said, as your God lives, even in our own lives, mm. I mean, just came up now, 
that we must live our lives so that people will see that we are different. We are not from the world. God sees a good heart. Yes. yes. And this mm. woman saw the mm. God mm. Uh, in him. Mm. And she was fetch, going to fetch it and he called her and said, Bring me, I pray you, a morsel of bread. And she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have not a cake but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I'm gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. So she's preparing for death. So obviously the yes. situation was very desperate. Mm, mm, mm. You know, how desperate are you? during this time of COVID, mm. just hang in there. When pastor ministers, you will see. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as you have said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for you and your two sons. She wasn't even sure if she was going to make a cake. Mm, mm, but Elijah mm. knew uh, what uh, mm -hmm. he was saying, and I suppose uh, you think you put it to a test. He did because uh, uh, he has a meeting of two desperate people. He has a prophet that's on the run. Mm -hmm. He's desperate. Mm -hmm. He has a woman mm -hmm. who's a widow who's desperate. Mm -hmm. God brings two desperate people together, but because they work together, both of them are blessed. Absolutely. Yes. You yeah. know, and you'll see later, I think when pastor ministers, you know, we mustn't hesitate to give. Yes. This woman never hesitated because your blessings are ten times more. For that says the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. Mm -hmm. and, and she went and did, which means there was a drought a drought and a famine. And you know why there was a drought and famine? There was a drought and famine because Israel refused to worship the one true God. So there was punishment. That's mm. why Elijah, right at the beginning, he goes to Ahab and he says to Ahab, there will not be any rain, there will not be dew upon the ground because, but Ahab does, uh, doesn't hear this from Elijah, mm. but because God is bringing a punishment upon the land. Yes, yes. And that is why we must live in fear, and I say fear in inverted commas, of living righteously. If we live unrighteously, there's a price to pay. And I would to God, the church of God would arise in this day mm. and understand that the consequences of sin is death. Mm. But the gift of eternal life is through Christ Jesus. Yeah. And here we have the punishment brought upon Israel because she sinned. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, how long ago the Bible says, uh, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all is. All these things shall be added unto you. you. Yes. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and the house did eat for many days. So her portion was blessed. Even whatever you give to the church, whether it's your offering, whether it's your one-tenth uh, you're giving, let me assure you that it will be blessed. And not only money, because often mm. pastors are misconstrued as asking for money. Mm. Here it is whatever talent you may have, okay, whatever yeah. gifting you may mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. You may be an usher. It might be in your heart to greet people. That's not something that uh, is be, uh, demeaning. It, you should be doing it with your heart. You should be doing it with all you have. And in a while, for a few points that I want to give you, one of the points is God will use what you have in your hand. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. And it came to pass after those things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, felt sick, and his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. In other words, he died. He died, yes. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with you, O you man of God? Are you come unto me to call my son to remembrance and to kill my son? 
And he said unto her, Give me your son. And he took him out of the bosom and carried him up into the loft where he abode and laid him upon his own bed, uh, where Elijah was sleeping. Mm -hmm. He put him on his bed. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O oh Lord my God, have you also brought evil upon this widow with whom I sojourn by killing her son? And he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord and said, O oh Lord my God, I pray you, let this child's soul come to life again. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah. And Amen. I'm finishing now. Amen. And the Lord hears your voice too. Mm. I yeah. can surely tell you that the Lord heard your voice. I'm finishing. And the Lord heard the voice of his Elisha, and the soul of the child came into him again, and he revived. That means he recovered instantly. And Elisha took the child and brought him down out of the chambers into the house and delivered him unto his mother. And Elisha said, See, your son lives. Amen. And Amen. the woman said to Elisha, Now by this I know, that you are a man of God, and that the word of the Lord is in your mouth. Amen. So she didn't know before that, that he was a man of God. Now, yeah. just a few things. I want to set the scene for a few moments. You see, Zarephath is a Phoenician town. And uh, in Luke 4, 26, Jesus refers to it, and he passes to Sidon. Now, Sidon is very important, and I want you, you to understand this. You see, if you recall, Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now, Canaan was the son of Ham. Now, if you remember the story that uh, Ham came in and saw his father's nakedness. In other words, Noah had too much to drink. Mm. He was in a drunken stupor. And he was lying on his bed. Mm -hmm. And some Bible commentators suggest that Ham did not just only look, but that he also abused his father. Now that's for conjecture. However, if you read carefully, mm -hmm. Noah says what was done or what he did to him. Not just look, but what he did to him. So Shem and Japheth come and they cover their father. But what does Ham do? He exposes his father and so it happens that um, um, he's cursed Noah curses Ham Ham has a son who is called Canaan and uh, you know Canaan is cursed uh, Noah clearly says he says that you Canaan uh, cursed you are a servant of servants you shall be to your brethren and Genesis 10 15 tells us that Sidon was the firstborn of Canaan. So we have Sidon, the city that we are talking about of Zarephath, where this widow woman was born. She does not have a name. She was born into an unbelieving city. She was born into a city of Baal worship. She was born into a place where they believed in a fertility God, where they sacrificed babies to this God, where there was sexual immorality, there was sexual perversion. This was a city of sin. And this widow comes from that city. And here we have her in this Zarephath, which is Sidon. By the way, it actually means a metal working place. And I think that God's working her, he has to heat her up in order for the metal to be softened, in order to fashion her according to his plan and purpose. She was an unbelieving woman. She was a sinner. So many times she says, refers to herself, Elijah, go to your God, thy God. Go to your God. And then she says, is my son dead because of my sin? And then at the end of that chapter, she says that mm. your God is a true God. So mm. she didn't believe before, but now she does. You see, this is the grace of God. Here we have a woman coming out of idolatry who is a sinful woman. But God prepares her a Gentile woman. 
You see, Paul says that we are grafted into the olive tree. We Gentiles are grafted into the olive tree in 1124 of Romans. After all, it wasn't natural for branches to be cut from a wild olive tree and to be made part of a cultivated olive tree. So it is much more likely that God will join the natural branches back to the cultivated olive tree. So we, as the Gentiles, are grafted into the olive tree. What's the story here? It is the grace of God. That God looks beyond our fault. And he sees our need. You see, the woman of Zarephath was a sinner. She is not somebody that you would expect God to use. But I've got news for you. Whether you're a male or female, whether you're a child or an adult, you may consider yourself a sinner. Your background might be so bad. You might have a lineage that's really tainted. But God still chooses you because he loves you. And he gives every one of us a chance. Not one of us is discarded. But there is something that I want to say to you. It is time that we turn to the Lord. It is time that we stop the games that we've been playing over the years and became sincere. This woman was in a desperate situation. And you need sometimes to be in a desperate situation before you change your heart and come to God. What do you have against me, man of God, she said. Did you come to remind me of my sin and kill my son? She says, do you remind me, did you come to remind me of my sin? Is that why you are here? And she said so clearly in 1 Kings 17, 12, as the Lord thy God, Cynthia read that, as the Lord thy God. Mm. You see, God is saying, my grace is sufficient for you. Mm. My strength is made perfect, perfect. in your weakness. Mm. You see, God choose, uh, chose her even before she knew it because mm. she had a beautiful heart. And God knew that she had a beautiful heart. As, and then she exposes when Elijah says, get me a glass of water. Ah, this woman was in a desperate situation. She was collecting wood to make her final fire. She was preparing for death. She was preparing to, for finality. She said to Elijah, I will get you the water. Now, you know, when you're in a bad situation, when you're in a desperate situation, and somebody says to you, won't you do me a favor? Won't you help me? Here, if it was you, I we probably would have said, oh man, get the water yourself. But you know what? She turned around to get Elijah a glass of water. Yeah. How beautiful is mm. that? Yes. And the Bible says, while she was going, he said to her, uh, sorry, uh, lady, would you just also make me a little cake? Now, mm. can you imagine <laughs> the impact that mm. would have on a destitute, desperate widow woman? Mm. Already she's in a terrible situation, but mm. now he says, also get me a cake. But she says, that's when she says, as surely as the Lord your God lives, mm. I don't have any bread. Only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I am gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself mm. and my son that we may eat and die. Oh, listen, while you are preparing for death, God is preparing you for life. Mm, a when you think that something in your life is about to die, mm. I want you today never to bury your miracle. Yes. Because God is about to change your death into a life situation. Mm. If that job situation seems dead to you, mm. I call it into a life in Jesus' name. Mm. If that wayward spouse of yours, mm. that wayward child of yours, that wayward parent, that wayward sibling, it might be dead to you, mm. but not to God. Mm. He's a God of mercy, he's a God of grace, mm. and he's going to raise dead to live again. Mm. And therefore, she who is preparing for death is obedient to Elijah. Now, I'm not asking you to be obedient to me as a servant of God because mm. if you take it that way, then you're going to miss the whole point. Yes, mm. you must be obedient to servants of God, but more than that, you must be obedient to God. Mm. You see, God sent Elijah. He said, I have commanded a widow woman, mm. unbelieving woman, but I have commanded her. You know, she had a very beautiful giving heart. She, all she said to Elijah, I'm going to prepare and I'm going to die. Mm. She didn't say, get it yourself. I can't give you anything because I've got nothing for myself. She just 
laid her case before the servant of God. Here we have Elijah who's on the run. He's running from Ahab and Jezebel. Now listen very carefully. Don't marry into a family that's going to cause you trouble. You see, here we have a problem. Ahab was the king of Israel. And he goes and marries Jezebel. Jezebel is Etbel's daughter. Etbel is the king of Sidon that worships Baal. Here we have worship of idolatry, as I yeah. said, perversion of the mm. highest order. Mm. And what does Ahab do? He goes and marries in the family of Jezebel. Mm. There is sin in the land. And that's why God says to Elijah, go and tell Ahab that there will be no rain or dew on the ground. And that is why Elijah is on the run, because he's afraid that Ahab wants to kill him. Mm. And he comes to the brook of Cherith, as Cynthia alluded to, it means separation. And he's there and he's been fed by the raven, which is a scavenger bird. He's drinking at the brook of Cherith and suddenly God dries it up. Listen, when God dries up your brook, yeah. when the ravens stop feeding you, don't give up mm. because you are at the brink of a miracle. you got to get up. you got to dust your clothes. There's a widow woman that's waiting for you. She doesn't have much, but God's going to take what she has and he's going to bless it. And thereafter, you've got a job of work to do. You've got to pull down Jezebel. You've got to bring Ahab into, into order. And you've got to take those 800 uh, prophets that are being prepared by Jezebel and Baal and destroy them and pull them down because there are still 700 people in Israel that are living righteously. But it takes one man to make a difference. Mm -hmm. You know, you in church today and out of church and wherever, wherever you are, it's time that you gave your heart to Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's time that you said, no more games, no more playing. Mm. There's a beautiful song that we used to sing earlier. Do you remember it? The King is Coming. Oh, the King is Coming. I can hear. I can hear yeah. the trumpet sounding. Mm. You know how it starts? The marketplace is empty. No more traffic in the streets. Mm. Isn't that so much like COVID-19 today? Everything has come to a standstill. The factories are at a standstill. The malls are at a standstill. Everything has come to an end. And here we have Elijah coming to Zarephath. He's running. He's a prophet on the run. And there is an unholy alliance between Ahab and Jezebel. You see, here we have this woman that's cut off from everything. The malls are empty in Zarephath. There's no produce there because there's drought. There's famine. Famine is a result of drought. And so there's a struggle, like we have a struggle today, COVID-19 or open the economy, drought or famine. Mm. Here's this woman. She loved to go out, do her makeup. She loved to cook for the family. She couldn't cook for the family. She, I'm sure, wanted to use the best cutlery and crockery. She couldn't. She was in a desperate situation. She watched her husband leave home in a body bag. She looked at the neighbors and they were dying all around her. She had survived the drought. She is in a famine. And here comes a man and he says to her, I want you to give me what you have in your hand. What you have in your hand is going to kill you. But if you give it to me, I'm going to turn it into something that is going to bring you life. And here this woman of Zarephath, she decides that she was going to be obedient to the servant of God. It is so tough that even the prophets are running in this at this time. It is so difficult, right? We, like we are in COVID-19. These are tough difficult times everything the market streets the markets are empty mm. but you know i love that song that says the king is coming oh, the, the king, king is coming, coming. i want to tell you beloved people the king is coming mm. all the machinery has gone silent the instruments in our churches have gone silent mm. the lighting that's so beautiful in our churches don't flicker any longer the pulpit has not heard a message for many months now. The pews are lying empty. The car park is empty. Mm. Can I tell you something? The king is coming. Yeah. The marketplace is empty. What have you got in your hand? This woman would have loved to dress. She would have loved to do her makeup. She would have loved to go to the beautician. She could do nothing. Like we are in COVID-19. She could do nothing. But you see, this is so beautiful. God does not look on the outward appearance. God looks upon 
the heart. And God's looking upon your heart today. I know that many of you are struggling right now. Your hair may not be like the way you like it to be. Your face may not be like the way you like it to be. People might be criticizing you and laughing at you. But let me tell you, there's a God that looks beyond all of that. There's a God that doesn't look at you. He looks at your heart. You know, uh, I, I said to somebody in my family, I won't mention names, I, you know, I'm living with these people. So I said, uh, please trim my eyebrows. And they said, no, I can't because I'm not in the grass cutting business. <laughs> so, you know, I, I know how it feels. It's, it's tough right now, but we just have to go on. Yeah, this woman was in a desperate situation, but you know what? She stepped out of her situation. Like Peter stepped out of the boat. Let me tell you, the other disciples never had the experience of walking on water, even for a few steps. But Peter had the experience of walking on water. He had the experience of the Lord holding his hand and saying to him, Peter, where is your faith? You see, the other disciples that did not step out did not have the experience. Here this woman stepped out and she said, I'm going to give what I have. And I'm sure that God's going to use. She didn't even know that this is Elijah's God. Whichever God she worshipped, she was going to give to that God. But she knew how much she had left. You know, when you know how many tins of baked beans you've got in your cupboard, when you know how many tins of fish you have in your cupboard, when you know how much of rice you have in your cupboard, it means you broke. When you don't know, it means that you have enough. This woman was terribly broke. She knew exactly what she had in her cupboard. And being broke, she said, I have a handful of meal, I have a cruise full of oil, and two sticks. And that was all that, I, that she had, and she was willing to give it all. You see, a normal person would have said, get the water yourself. Mm -hmm. A normal person would have said, I can't give you what I have to eat. My son and I will have to eat, and then we're going to die. Let me tell you, this disruption is not going to be a destruction. I want to say that again. This disruption of COVID-19, mm. this disruption of our churches yes. is not going to be your destruction. Mm. May I say to you, the church is in its finest hour yes. right now. Mm. Don't you believe that the building is important? Mm. We are the church. Yes. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You, you know, then Elijah says something. He says, if you bake a cake for me first, listen. I know this is hard, but if you are willing to give to God what you have in your hand first, he will bless you. And that's hard. When things are tough, it's very difficult. You see, a very important principle here is that the cruise of oil and the meal never overflowed. Isn't that beautiful? Mm. The Bible never says that she put her hand into the barrel and she drew Mm. And the barrel overflowed, mm. never ever. Yeah. The oil never overflowed, mm. but there was sufficient for every day. Amen. And beloved people, I want to say to you this morning, mm. there will be sufficient for every day. Mm. Your barrel may not be overflowing. Yeah. Your cruise of oil may not be overflowing, yeah. but there will be sufficient for every day. That is the grace of God, mm. even to a sinful woman. Mm. How much more for you? Mm. I want to encourage you today. Mm. If you've never given your heart to Jesus, mm. today is the day. Amen. Today is the day that you turn mm. from making things your idols. Is your car your idol? Is your home your idol? Is your job your idol? What is your idol today? Mm -hmm. Turn to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and his grace. Mm -hmm. You know, God always has to have something to work with. He worked with a cruise of oil. He worked with a handful of meal. He worked with five loaves and two fishes. He worked with the jawbone of an ass in Samson. And he worked with the old rugged cross. Oh, I love the old rugged cross. God is asking you, what have you got in your hands that I could work? God cannot work with what you had in the past. Mm -hmm. He cannot work with what you have in the future or hope to have in the future. He is prepared to work with whatever you have in your hand right now. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you, if you are a technician in IT, have you called your pastor and said, Pastor, can I help you with your live streaming? I know that you pastors 
are not trained to do live streaming, you're not television personalities, you don't know how to do live uh, streaming on Facebook. In fact, pastors have pitched against so social media and suddenly we find ourselves there right in the midst of it and saying, open your phones and get to Facebook and whatever. Have you given your gift to the church? Mm -hmm. Have you given your gifting to the Lord? You know that you're a teacher may not be a school teacher, but you have it in your heart where you love children, but you say, I'm so shy. No, you've got to break out of your shyness and you've got to come and give whatever you have and say, Lord, I do not have too much, but this is all I have. And I want to tell you, God will take what you have and he will bless you. If you have just a, a handful of meal, he's going to bless you. You know, 5,000 men only were fed with two fishes and five loaves. But you know what surprises me there? That they picked up how many baskets? Twelve. Twelve baskets were picked up. The question I want to ask is, if there were twelve baskets there, mm. what were the people doing with their food? They got twelve baskets, but yet this little boy, whose lunch was enough for one day, gave his lunch and it fed everybody, but they filled 12 baskets. Where did they get to 12 baskets where? from? There were people there with baskets that refused mm. to give it to be used. Yeah. Are you going to be one of those that refuses to give your basket or are you prepared to say, here's my meal, here's my oil, I want to give it to the Lord and the Lord will take it and multiply it. So many of you have so many giftings. Are you using your giftings? You know, we've come to the time where we've got to come before God and say to God, I'm giving you what I have in my hand, use it. The grace of God is sufficient for you. You may say, I'm a sinner. I've done this and I've done that and I've, I've wronged so many people. I've wronged you, God. I've got news for you. I've got hope for you. We're serving a God of grace. Mm. We're serving a God who says, my grace is sufficient mm. for you. My strength is made perfect, perfect. in your weakness. Today, I want to invite you, if you've never met this God, if you are like the widow of Zarephath, a nameless woman, no identity, you might feel like that. Nobody knows me. Nobody has ever heard of who I am. I'm not known by anybody. But can I tell you that God has commanded a widow woman to prepare for the servant of God. Like God has commanded a widow woman, he has you in his heart. He has you in his mind. This widow woman could have taken a son that was dead and buried a son and said goodbye to him. But I've got something that I must tell you. Don't bury your miracle. There's a God that's going to raise whatever has died in your life. God's going to raise that and that is going to be your miracle. Don't give up at the brink of your miracle. The marketplace is empty. No more traffic in the streets. All the builders' tools are silent. Mm -hmm. No more time to harvest wheat. Busy housewives cease their labors. In the courtroom, no debate. Work on earth is all suspended as the king comes through the gate. Oh, the king is coming. The king is coming. I just heard the trumpet sounding and now his face I see. Oh, the king is coming. The king is coming for me. God bless you. On behalf of my dear wife, myself, on behalf of our elders of Living Waters Church and our leaders and our family at Living Waters Church, we want to tell you, yes, a big, big blessing to you. Yes, a big I love you from all of us and God be with you. I'm going to ask Cynthia to bid farewell to you and then I'm going to pronounce the benediction after prayer. Goodbye and God bless you. Don't give up hope. I just feel that soon we're going to be back in church. As much as everybody is saying that uh, it's not looking good, it's not looking good, but don't discount the hand of God. Amen. And now I'm mm. looking forward to that day. I'm sure even you too. And uh, one funny girl in church, I said to her, oh my, I'm really missing going to church. I'm really missing my, my car and I'm missing my loafing. She said, then I just didn't say I go sit in your car. At least laugh at that. No, that was bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, goodbye. God bless you and I love you all. Okay, let us pray. 
Father, we just thank you for this wonderful time that we share together. Yes. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. Yes. We thank you that we could laugh in the midst of all of this because yes. we know who our God is. I pray a blessing upon every family that has listened in. I pray a blessing, Lord, in every home, that there will be more than enough, Father, that you would supply every need of every family. I pray that we will not be anxious for anything, but in prayer and supplication, we will make our requests known unto God. Be with us this day. Let the joy of heaven saturate our homes and our families. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee shalom. God bless you. Goodbye.